Hello friends, in this video we're going to implement Coyote Time into our platformer character. So first of all, let me explain what this is and why we need it. In many 2D platformer games, Coyote Time is implemented so that the game feels a little bit more responsive when the player jumps just before the player starts falling. So for example, here we have the player and let's say the player is running to the right at this point, the player's collision shape stops touching the box. If the player starts, if the player tries to jump now, it's not going to work because is on floor is going to be false. If we take a look at the script, you will see that right here. Let's get rid of that comment. Right here, we're checking if is on floor is true before we jump. So because of that, this jump here is not going to work but that's going to feel very unresponsive and the player is going to feel bad because they just missed a jump. And the player might not even feel or see that the collision shape you know, stopped touching the ground here. They might just think that the space bar didn't work or something went wrong. So in order to fix this, Coyote Time is going to let the player jump for a very short amount of time after the player stops touching the ground. And also, during Coyote time, the gravity isn't going to affect the player. So basically, the player is going to be able to go like this without falling, and then they're going to be able to jump. But just for a very short amount of time. So that is what Coyote time is. Let's go ahead and start implementing this. First of all, we're going to go into the player scene and create a timer. We're going to call this the Coyote timer. In the end, we're going to set this to be something very short like 0.1, but for testing purposes, just for now, let's set it to be one second. This is going to be a one shot timer because we want this to stop after it times out. We don't want it to start again. Now we need to start this timer right when the player stops colliding with the ground in this frame. That's what we want to detect. So let's go into the player script and see how we're going to do this. So we know that we have a function called is on floor that is going to return true if we're touching the floor and false if we're not touching the floor. We can take advantage of this and check it before we move and save that in a variable called was on floor. And then we can check it again after we move. And if was on floor was true, that means before we moved, we were touching the floor. And if it is false after we move, that means we just stopped touching the floor in this very frame. So to check for that, we're going to create an if statement and we're going to check if we were on the floor. So if was on floor is true and if is on floor's current value is false. In this case, we're going to say fall. Let's test this. And to actually test this, I'm going to make some changes to our scene. I'm going to create another box right here. I'm also going to change the box's Z index so that it is behind the tile map. Let's click on the box. Let's go into ordering here and set the Z index to be negative one, just like that. And then I'm going to put the player above it, just so we can test this a little bit quickly. Now when we fall, we should get the fall print statement, as you can see. But currently this is also going to trigger when we jump, because currently the if statement is also checking for that. We were on the floor and we're not on the floor anymore. That also includes jumping. So to only check for the falling case, we're going to create another end here and say velocity.y is greater than or equal to zero. Let's see why. Because as you know, when we jump, we set the velocity to be something negative. So if it is zero or if it is greater than zero, that means we're falling or we're staying on the ground. Now we should only be checking the falling case. As you can see, when I jump, we don't get it. But when I fall, 
we get the if statement. Perfect. So now we know the exact moment in the game that we start falling. Here we're going to start the coyote timer. And then we're going to, let's see, we didn't get a reference to it. So let's do that up here. On ready var coyote timer equals coyote timer, just like that. Then I'm going to connect the timeout signal of the coyote timer to a function. I'm also going to, I'm also going to take that function up just underneath the physics process, just right here, so that we can see it easily. And then I'm going to create a Boolean variable, which is going to be can coyote jump, which is going to be false at the start. But when we start, right when we start the coyote timer, we're going to set it to be true. And then when the timer is over, we're going to set it to be false. And while this boolean is true, the player is going to be able to jump while it's in the air, basically. So how can we do that? Let's take a look at the place we make the player jump. Right here. Currently, we're checking if the jump key is pressed and is on floor is true. Now there's another case that the player can jump. Can coyote jump equals true. So instead of making this check here, let's take it, let's create another if statement, and let's say or can coyote jump. So if the jump key is pressed, and if is on floor is true, or if ca can coyote jump is true. So if either of these is true, then we're going to be able to jump. And if we did make a coyote jump, we're going to check for that again. And we're going to set it equal to be false. We can also say print coyote jump, just like that. Okay, this should be working now. We can test it, although it is not complete because we're still gonna fall even inside of the coyote time, but we can implement that after we test it. Okay, so let me just run the game. Whoops, not the scene. Let's run the whole game. And I'm going to fall and try to jump mid-air. Let's actually do it here first. And as you can see, while the coyote time is active, I can jump and we get the coyote jump print statement. We don't normally get that, but if I try to jump while in air, we get it. Just like that, okay. So the final thing to implement here is making the player not fall while the coyote time is active. So to do that, we're going to take a look at the place we implemented gravity, which is right here. Now we want to not add the gravity here if the coyote time is active. So to do that, we're going to say if we're not on the floor and can coyote jump equals false. Also, in this case, we don't want to increment the gravity into the velocity.y. Okay, let's take a look at this. I'm going to walk off the edge and we should be, you know, standing on the ground, basically. As you can see, until the coyote timer times out, which is one second long. Just like that. And while I'm in there, I can jump. And now I can do stuff like this. <laughs> which looks funny. Okay, so this means the coyote timer, the coyote time is correctly working. And the final thing to do here is going to be setting the coyote timers wait time to be something reasonable so that this is actually making sense. Ideally, you don't want the player to, you know, detect consciously that there is coyote time, they shouldn't be able to tell the difference. So it should be very, very subtle. Because if they can tell the difference, then it's just going to feel weird. So because of that, we're going to set this to be 0.1 seconds, which I think is a good value. So let's try it out. Now, as you can see, I'm still in the air for a very short amount of time, but it's very difficult to notice actually. And I can 
still jump just like that. As you can see, those were all coyote jumps. And yeah, this is it basically. I just missed it there. That is good. You don't want to be able to hit it all the time. Just like I said, this is, needs to be very subtle. And it's just going to make the game feel a little bit nicer because it's going to let the player basically cheat a little. Okay, so that's it. That is Coyote Time. I hope you liked this. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.